So let's now go about creating the flooring. Um, so the first thing we need to enable is one of the add-ons in user preferences. And we click the add-ons. We click the mesh section. And I'm full of lies. The objects. Oh, sorry, the add mesh. I was semi okay. We want to make sure we tick on add extra objects. Just put a tick here, save user settings, and we can close it. <coughs> Excuse me. From here, we can go Shift A, Mesh, Extras, Wall Factory. Um, I was just having a play with this around again, just to get the right settings again. Normally, what happens is it comes with an opening, and so we kind of got looks like a stone wall. It's actually really nice. What I changed was, is I removed the opening, but I mean, you can see we can have some pretty cool stuff. That's awesome. Let's remove the opening. What I did is I changed the block size, the depth from two to 0.5. Okay. And that's pretty much all I wanted. Um, what we can do though, is we can, I'm actually not going to increase it. Let's do it a different way and we'll play with some of the modifiers. So I'm actually really happy on how that wall is. I mean, obviously if you want to go a little bit more extreme, you can create like a radial, which I think looks really nice, but I'm not going to be playing with that one at the moment, create a curved one, so on and so forth, but we're going to keep it nice and flat. So at this point here, I'm going to rotate X 90. So now it's kind of flat on the ground. Uh, what I would like to do is go into tab into edit mode. I'm going to select all G Z and kind of just line it up there just so we've got on there. I'm going to take that out of edit mode. I'm going to add a modifier and add an array modifier. And now let's connect this up a little bit. So you see where it's one, it's moving in point ones. So point one's a little bit too much, but if I hold shift, click and drag, I can kind of get it in there and it's just not enough. So I'm going to go point eight, seven, five. Beautiful. That looks like it's meant to be there. And let's just move that over. I'm going to now rotate this one as well as to rotate 2.25 minus. What I will do as well is kind of move it all the way back here. Okay. And now we kind of get this really cool texture of um, the main character here walking. So I'm just going to kind of move him down. Like it does actually seem like a bit of a rough road now. I mean, obviously we can add some extra objects here, probably put another building behind there. Um, but we kind of just want that sense of, sense of something where, you know, we can have a bit of a fight. <coughs> so we can set up what the camera looks like. So I'm going to right click on the camera. Alt R, Alt G, Alt S, and that resets the rotation, the location, and the scale. First thing I'm going to do is rotate, press R, X 90, and bring it out. So now if I press zero on the camera, you can kind of, it seems like it's got a depth of field. So this is perspective. We're going to change it to orthographic. So the same view that we were working with before. I'm going to press G and the way to move the camera in or out is through the orthographic scale. All right. So that looks quite nice. What I'm going to do as well as I can come down here into viewport shading, I can select material 
And so this is what it's actually going to look like. So that white is actually pretty bright. That's a bit too bright. So I think that's something we need to change a little bit later. Um, and obviously the ground, we haven't really put any color on, but that's what the ground looks like. And that's what our scene is going to look like. So if I want to move the camera around, this is what this building looks like. You know, we can't really see what that looks like there, but I think that's quite nice. So there we go. We've quickly created some scenery um, and where we're going to be doing the action for the next part of the animation.